What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 130 of Value Town. I'm Chan Man V, and joining me today, of course, are my co-hosts Ali Straza and Jackie Chan. What's up? Hello. Hey. Hey. Sorry for the late start, guys. <laughs> everybody out there too, man. My uh, my rig, my new rig, which has already been giving me headaches for like a, a week and a half now, decided just to poop out literally one minute before the show started. <laughs> <laughs> so thank, thankfully, my old rig, my good old faithful, is still here, and and we're able to <laughs> do, continue doing the show. <laughs> But um want to welcome our first time guest, Ant. What's up, buddy? Hey, doing okay. How are you? Good, good, man. Fresh back from <laughs> Shanghai. You actually, you had a longer stay in Shanghai than Ali did. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you recovered yet? Are you back on the the sleeping schedule? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, absolutely not. I'm, I'm getting like two hours of sleep. Like, uh, I'm taking a lot of naps right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you just gotta Going you gotta to suck elementary. it up. You gotta suck it up like one day. One day you just gotta be tired as can be, and then yeah. just that that hopefully will reset reset you back to whatever the time's supposed to be. But, yeah, I'm hoping my my trip to Atlanta is gonna do that because like my mm -hmm. flight's at five a.m. Mm -hmm. and then I'm just hoping I'm gonna get there and just crash. Okay. Five a.m. flight. Oof. Okay. Yeah, that's DreamHack, right? Yeah. Nice. Gosh, I feel like there's a DreamHack like every week now. It's mm -hmm. insane. So cool, though. Definitely really, really yeah. great. Uh, Jackie, how about you, man? How you been this week? Good. Uh, I've just been memeing around as usual. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I've never actually been to a DreamHack. Would you advise going? Really? Uh, wow. Yeah, I've never been to a DreamHack. Um, I think I'm going to this one more because I want to see a lot of people. So I think it'd be it's fun to go see like a lot of people you see online and you talk to online. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think they're really fun events. You should at least try it. Try a one yeah. in your Hearthstone life. Yeah, I'd love to. The, the DreamHack events are probably the most grueling mm. ones, though. Like in terms of the event itself, right? Like, there's, yeah, it's because it's Swiss. It's there's not that many that are Swiss, and a lot of waiting around. Yeah, but it, it's <laughs> it's the most competitive one, though. Like every time I've, I mean, I've been, I went to Austin once, and and uh, I even remember summer like way back. Like they were they were all really really good. And they they keep the same format all of them, so it's really. I think it's a big feat to win DreamHack. That's the biggest thing, you know. Like, it arguably is the hardest tournament outside of HTT. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. But enough DreamHack talk. We've got uh, you know, we've got a lot to talk about today. Just with a uh, combination of obviously having Ant here joining us, and uh, we've got just some a community. It's a bit of community news, and we've been playing all kinds of different decks. We've got a new segment, Deck Evolution. That we are going to be doing. Uh, no, no bumpers today, guys. I know you guys were like crazy about just how loud they were. We're, we can't do them today just because it was on my on my other machine. So we'll bring them back next week. But we do have a new segment that's going to be uh, us bringing our decks and combining them, combining them to make this like beautiful, like, all our our powers combined, you know, kind of thing, making an awesome deck. <laughs> beautiful or terrible? Yeah, beautiful or terrible. But whatever it is, it's deck <laughs> of the week, guys. All right, <laughs> so get ready for that. And then Megatorx workshop, of course, and then Q and A at the very end. But uh, I want to start off by getting a chance to visit with Ant here, given that he's our guest. Um, yeah, so you've, you were in Shanghai for that long. T tell us about the experience. This is your first time in China, right? Yeah, it's actually my first time international. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a cool experience. I've, I've lived in California all my life, so I was, not, mm -hmm. I was not ready for the humidity there. <laughs> oh, really? It's that hot over there? I didn't even realize that. Yeah. Right now. I think there was like record heats there, but I mean, <laughs> oh, it, it was still it was still uh, pretty warming. cool, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of AC in the places that we went. That's cool. Like uh, competition-wise, though, like did you enjoy the setup and did they take care of you and all that good stuff? Yeah, I mean, it's just like nothing I've ever experienced. <laughs> it's just so I I can't even like find the words for it. It's because you know. There's like this big stage. It's like this huge backstage. There's mm -hmm. all this production. It's just like hard to take in. It's a lot different than playing at your home, right? Or at, at yeah. a B BWW. <laughs> right? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> it's a big change. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I it was great getting a chance to you know see you and and uh, you know up on the stage and doing super well. And I, I thought the piece that they did on you was like excellent too. You know, like I just the piece with just the whole background and your, you know, your mom and everything. That was, uh -huh. that was really, really good. 
I was hoping that came out good. Uh, they, <laughs> they, can't, they sent this whole like uh, a crew to my house to do the video, mm -hmm. and wow. I just I had no idea how it was gonna turn out. So I, I'm glad uh, it was really well received. Yeah, I think it was it was being spread on Twitter like quite a bit too. So. Um, yeah. you know, kudos to obviously the production team for, for doing that. And, and, you know, your, your, I think your backstory is obviously great. And, and it's, I think it's one that's the whole point of HTT, right. Is, is to really have a story that's pretty similar to that, you know, just mm -hmm. playing Hearthstone, just decide to play Hearthstone and want to give it a go. And all of a sudden, you know, you're in China and on, yeah. on a big stage, possibly <laughs> winning a lot of money. Yeah. Right? <laughs> That's... Yeah, it's still hard to think about. I yeah. still kind of feel like I'm dreaming. Like, this, there's no way this could be happening right now. Well, well, imagine being on the BlizzCon stage because you know you're obviously qualified yeah. for it, right? <laughs> so, um, that's that's always I know that's always a, an awesome experience for players too. But um, yeah, yeah so you played a tournament after the HTT also, right? What which one mm -hmm. was that? I'm not sure. A lot of people got a chance to watch that. That was the the Titan R land final, right? Yeah, so they had like an on online qualifier uh, for like China, and then they had it for EU and A like combined, and they took the top eight of those tournaments and they fought it out. And it wasn't Shanghai, it was Nanjing, but it was still it was still in China. Yeah, Nanjing, that's not too far, right? I I can't remember my Chinese geography. <laughs> I probably shouldn't even <laughs> guess because I it could I be say, it was wrong. Like, it was like a two-hour train ride. Oh, okay, but, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm not. A, I'm not well, <laughs> well experienced with trains because I got off on the wrong station right. when I was coming back. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> that's crazy. Oh, yeah. so did you have to get another train back again, or like? Yeah. I mean, I thought I was the right place. So you have to have like a Chinese number to sign into the Wi-Fi. So I had to like try to communicate uh, oh, with someone who doesn't God. speak English. Oh my man! Um, a lot of. Just if I can use their number to log into the Wi-Fi, so they finally like he finally understood what I was trying to say. And then he we, I got a hold of because I was supposed to be traveling with Eloise, so I got a, a hold of Eloise and she she saved me. She bought me a ticket back and everything. Oh, told me how to get my ticket. Lifesaver, <laughs> Eloise. Oh, and then man. when great. I got to the, when I got to Shanghai, she already had like Starbucks ready for me. Oh, it was great. Man, <laughs> Eloise, a sweetheart, man, total sweetheart. That's like my worst <laughs> nightmare. My worst nightmare is being in a country where I can't speak the language and there's no way to communicate with anybody. <laughs> I'm totally screwed. I was just like pointing at my phone, like Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> the, Google, the Google Translator app, you can like. Uh, I, oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I, you can that. Use I just forgot about it. Oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> smooth, smooth. Good job. <laughs> That's cool, man. So, um, so overall, how do you think you played? Like, you know, first time being on the stage, do you think were you nervous or uh, you you felt like you just played like you normally do? Um, I would say like my first game, I was I was like pretty nervous. Like, you don't like no one ever wants to show that they're nervous or say that they're nervous. But man, like I was really nervous. <laughs> Especially because like I was I was like super favored, so like to go in, to go in and lose would feel so bad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't yeah, know about seriously. you guys, but I was telling Aunt Let last night. It's like. I, I should have picked you for my packs because everybody I pick, well, actually, I shouldn't have picked you because you're lucky if I don't pick you because the person I pick doesn't end up winning anything. But uh, how did you guys end up doing? I don't think I even asked Allie and Jackie. How, who, who did you guys pick for? Did you guys get packs or anything? I did. I picked Calento, so. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, got, I got some packs. Yeah, I didn't even do it in time. I was, I was going to pick Calento, but I didn't even do it in time. So I missed out on some packs, man. I've well, missed it before. I, tr I picked and missed out on packs too. So. Actually, I might have gotten one. Do you get one for doing it? I forget. You get, do you get one for signing yeah, up? Yeah, you get one for Yeah, you get one it, for yeah. signing up. So, yeah, I got one. Yeah. So, Calento, man. Fact, Go ahead. He had 90% of the votes. Yeah. Really? really? That's what they told us, Holy at least. That Calento might be made up, but that's what dude, people that were Chinese telling vote, me. Man. Right? That Chinese <laughs> vote, man. That Chinese vote. Strong, dude. Chinese, like, loved Calento. Strong. Did you pick yourself? Or did you oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's right, dude. I got a nice three packs coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be confident in yourself. If you didn't pick yourself, yeah. I'd be like, what's going yeah. on, man? You can't be that they nice. Told me, like, a, lot of, a lot of the players picked Kalento. I was like, how can you do that? You have to be yeah, confident to yourself. 
That's right. Think on Absolutely. yourself. No, I like that. That's a good strategy. Good mentality. You get, or you could be hedging. <laughs> you could be hedging too. <laughs> so yeah, you, true, you're not you're not upset either way, type of thing. Yeah, right. I picked yeah, Muzzy, true. and oh man, you know, just uh, hopefully Muzzy will will come back around the next time <laughs> if I pick him. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's he has a pretty good lead on last call, so he he should still make it to BlizzCon or not World Champs, not BlizzCon anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. World. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, World Champs. Yeah, how does what last call work now? Like because RDU is obviously going to be there too, and mm -hmm. it's still a tournament to get into BlizzCon from there, right? No, it's just if you're leading in points, uh -huh. you go straight to World Champs. Oh, thank goodness. Thank yeah. goodness it's like that. Last year was so brutal, man. I remember RDU going through that and <laughs> yeah, you know, that was rough. the entire man, year being one of the top winners. Was that? Was that Jackie? Uh, uh, it's entertaining. Yeah. That's cool. Well, last yeah. call are the best players that aren't in, you know, like for the entire year, these are the players that perform the best. So it, it it's um it's kind of heartbreaking when they don't get in, you know, and they've some of them if you ranked the players that, you know, ended up getting in each season with everybody else, they might have been in that top 16. It's just they just didn't make it in, right? So it's it's pretty yeah. brutal when they don't. But um, I'm it's happy to hear that they automatically get in now. So what happens between now and BlizzCon? Like, is there anything going on? There is summer. It's just a summer, summer playoffs. Right? Still one more, still one more yeah. season, right? Yeah, and then yeah, and then we get in. Okay, cool. Yeah, that should be interesting. And does, you're, are you just are you gonna try like to get points or anything? Or are you just gonna kick back and just wait until <laughs> October? No, well, I mean I came back. I came back and just started playing in open cup yeah. you know i still want i still want to play in summer you know i yeah. want to make it back you know give the consistency and oh, that's cool. and storyline right yeah yeah <laughs> no that's yeah, good man. i don't know good. i don't that's know good. what i would do with not competing it would just like be boring so mm -hmm. yeah why not yeah you gotta keep on that edge man because yeah exactly yeah, once you kind of back once you back off of it it's, sometimes you can't get it again so yeah I think that's you can't lose the passion yeah totally all right. Well, um, we got a lot of news that's been floating around. You know, just with the uh, announcement of the expansion. Uh, you know, we've had this kind of week of, of really absorbing it and and maybe seeing what some of the other devs are are leaking or not leaking, but maybe um, answering in terms of questions. And Ben did a Q and A the other day, and I uh, figured we would talk a little bit about it. Let me um, let me actually bring it up real quick before I talk about it. A lot of little things. I wouldn't say there's anything super major, but um, some things that we already know. No, Basically, no card, card spoilers until the 24th, uh, which is less than a week away. So we're going to start seeing some cards being uh, uh, revealed by different members of the community, websites and streamers and all that good stuff. And then, um, let's see, anything else in terms of the, uh, the release? Uh, I don't think there's definitely something going on at Comic Con, right? With the um, with the the video that they made with the whole uh, Citadel. Did y'all see that video? I thought it was so well done. <laughs> oh, dude, so that video well is so good. The, the oh. Lich King looked legit, and the kids were so cute. Like it was just they did a great job with that video. I mean, is this going to be like an ice cream shop at Comic Con? Is that like yeah? So <laughs> yeah. Lich King giving you ice cream. Yeah, yeah think, that's exactly what it's going to be. I think they get over the frozen cone. Yeah, the frozen, <laughs> cone, yeah. The frozen cone. So I'm wondering if it's it's going to be that place or if it's going to be, you know, uh, another venue near Comic Con. But they are taking over some kind of venue, brick and mortar place, and yeah, it, I'm assuming the Lich King will be serving up ice cream from there. But um, a, a lot of other you know personalities and notable folks will be there too. Uh, Al, you're going to be there, right? I am. Yeah. I'm going to be there. Yes. Yes. I'm really, really excited. Uh, there's also a fireside gathering there as well. Oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's going to be a, a lot of fun. If you're in the San Diego area, or if you're going to Comic Con, definitely drop by there, or, or um, probably keep an eye out on Play Hearthstone at Play Hearthstone Twitter because they'll, they'll probably yeah. give you some more details there. I'll update. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but talking about, I guess, uh, again, Ben's AMA, they said that a Druid and Warlock hero skin is going to be happening soon, which is pretty pretty sweet, given that we haven't had one since Tehran Day. And that's been a while, <laughs> right? Been, it's been a while, actually. Yeah, yeah. Right? Tehran Day was the uh, Twitch Prime thing, right? So it's... And that was, like, 
TwitchCon Twitch last Twitch year, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's been a while. One yeah. thing that I think is funny is about Tarande is that Kibler doesn't know what Fandral says normally because he only hears your you'll lead our people to ruin when he comes into play. <laughs> oh, really? oh wow. Yeah, he doesn't that's he didn't hilarious. know the he says uh, behold the rage of the fire right. lens. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's had Tarande for so long, that. right? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, that's he, only, funny. he plays priest like exclusively, right? Yeah. All the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. More power to him, man. I freaking love that. Love the priest. Um, let's see. What else here? Um, they also talked about, well, they talked about Tarande, and that's it's not even um, out in all the regions yet. So it's been out in like, you know, almost nine, ten months here, but it's not you know, not everywhere else. So I think that's one of the reasons why it's taken so long. Um, right. he, goes, he goes in and talks about cards a little bit. And one thing he mentions is <clears throat> that Ice Block matches some red flags for cards that um <laughs> maybe shouldn't be in standard forever yeah, ice block dun, dun, dun. could be yeah potentially rotating into wild <laughs> which would be very very controversial well let's talk about it. so this is the second or third time that we've heard something resembling ice block potentially being moved on um you know maybe in the hall of fame or whatever so want to get your thoughts on on, you know, do you think Ice Block's too good? What do you think Mage will be without Ice Block? Uh, Ant, I'll let you start off. I mean, I really hate Ice Block. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Let me start really by saying that. Yes. Okay. Good riddance. I mean, <laughs> I, I, it's probably not like super broken. It's just like, it's really frustrating to play against, especially because, like, you get the satisfaction of, like, killing them. But they don't die, yeah. And then like it lets them play in a way where like they play an ice block and they could just completely ignore your board, right? They play ice block and like burn your face, and you just pop it and they just kill you the following turn, or play another one, burn you, and then kill you that like the next turn. So like it kind of makes them not really interact or anything, and kind of just play a different kind of game. Yeah, I, th I think that's probably the biggest complaint against it, right? It's just the the lack of interactivity with it. Mm -hmm. um, Ali, I, I I think you're on the opposite in the opposite boat, right? You love Ice Block? Not, I'm not on the opposite. I'm kind of split down the middle. I I love Mage as a class, like it's my second favorite class, and so because it's such a staple of Mage, I'm a little worried that Mage is gonna be bad or something. <laughs> like <laughs> if if it if it uh, loses Ice Block, but but on the other side of the coin, I am excited for. Um, more experimentation like may just kind of like fallen into this one category um or a lot of the time with those type of like freeze mage type decks and so i i'm excited to see what else mage can be but um yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm actually yeah, a little sad it, it could go but i i, I see the benefit <laughs> in rotating it i guess this is probably unpopular opinion they're gonna be like dance game alley what the heck <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you still well, got Nova Doom, you're fine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's right. true. That's true. And so right. I think it'll be refreshing for the game to lose it. Um, but personally, like a little part of me is a little sad. So. Yeah. Jackie, what about you? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think with kind of how they've brought out standard and they've said that they want with standard, they want the meta to keep changing, like with expansions. Mm -hmm. And while Ice Block is a thing. Like like Ali was saying, like mages can just play in a very similar style of just like freeze the board, ice block, burn the face, and that's pretty much it. So yeah. I, but the other side of that is that I've always been a re real fan of like control mage, and I would lo I love control mage. So I think mm -hmm. if uh, they did rotate ice block out, I think they would have to bring in um, quite a lot of defensive mage cards mm -hmm. that can allow like a a control type of mage to still be possible. Yeah, ice wall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> no. yeah i'm I'm right there with you too like i i think that um with ice block you know one way to think about it too is that it could be design restricting too like they can't come out with even some of these more powerful defensive things because then then mage would have way too many like they'd get an extra a two extra turns right with two ice blocks as well as whatever crazy defense too so I think you know removing ice block uh, as as much, I actually don't have a problem with it because it I feel like it in in, in or caused a, a different type of style of play to to be existent in Hearthstone. But at the same time, you know it's like I want the designers to be challenged and I want them to to have to create new cards and create a new 
uh, meta or designed for Mage itself. So I'm all for that. <laughs> Definitely all for that. Um, let's see. The other thing, too, he, he mentions a Stone Tusk Boar. He mentioned something about legendary totems, but, uh, you know, legendary totems, I'm cool, or whatever. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Stone Tusk Boar, he says, is the most guilty card when it comes to limiting future <laughs> card mechanics. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike Dene also said that Prep and Innervate and Malagus are, are uh, mechanic limiters, too. So yeah, that's I mean, interesting. Quick, yeah. Yeah, to quickly bring that up, like I was, I was saying earlier, can you imagine rogue without preparation or druid without innovate they would be completely dead different. sucks yeah <laughs> totally yeah. Like, totally I mean, druid would, would just be dead like, yeah literally. no need to make like dead. better ramp cards i guess i think besides just like wild growth i guess we have blossom now but like it's not that yeah. great yeah. yeah so they would have to like they would have to make better ramp cards i think has there well, ever um, been yeah. oh sorry. go ahead i was gonna say either they make better ramp cards or they make better removal cards because you know, either yeah. you lose tempo in the beginning, you can catch up later, or you know, or it's the opposite, which you're talking about. Yeah. Mm. I think that's where Druid really is like the one thing that Druid is missing right now. Because like Earth and Scales, you they, you can get your health, but mm -hmm. the single target removal now that I mean, obviously Naturalize is still a card, but um, the fact that Mulch is gone, it just like mm -hmm. really struggles with um, removing threats, you know. In a, uh, convenient way, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'm trying to think of is there ever a deck that doesn't run Innervate or drew a deck that doesn't run Innervate? Well, Jackie, your mm -hmm. egg did didn't run it for a while, right? Yeah, I didn't play egg druid, I didn't like druid for a while, but <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know if we can count that. <laughs> <laughs> like early aggro druid better, only played right? like one Innervate, yeah, that's like okay. the only thing I know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it can I be mean, on card. like in, in my aggro druid at the moment on ladder, like I only play one Innervate because because you have like no card draw. I feel like okay. a lot of the time, if you draw both the innovates, you just lose the game. Yeah, that's fair. Obviously, obviously, having two in the deck increases the chance of drawing one of them. But whenever you draw two of them, you just lose. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it's a <laughs> it's a really I dangerous place, but it's definitely yeah. a dangerous place because they've they've obviously designed Druid around it, but at the same time, they they can't add anything that that replaces it in a way too. So I, I think at, at some point they'll have to rip the bandaid off and just take it out. And then start filling yeah. the holes like yeah. early game type of thing, um, but Stone Tusk Boar. So charge being an issue again. I mean, what's what's new, right, guys? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Right. So, same old, same old. Yeah. It, I it, mean, Quest Rogue was the only time. Is Quest, Quest Rogue the only time Stone Tusk Boar's ever been played in competitive decks? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think it is, right? So. Yeah, we had Firebats Boar meta went that one time, right? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what are you talking about, guys? God. Oh. Was it that, that hunter came to mind, or something? But I was like, yeah, no, I think it was like rogue or something. Oh, it's a rogue. I remember oh, like rogue. That's he right. played it and he concealed right. it. Yeah, yeah, that was funny. But I, but legitimately, I, I think you're right. Yeah, I think it was. But when they when they say like a card that's never normally played is so restricting, it makes you think right? what they're trying. What are they actually trying to do? Yeah. I I feel um, like it's buff related, right? Something. It has to be something where you can put a lot of stats on a, on a body because they don't want you attacking that turn. That's that's what I'm yeah. imagining. Or it's like poison or you know, something powerful, right? That you can buff. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if if they ever go as far to like rotate boar. It just feels weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh like, my god! Yeah. It's not it's making not the Hall of Fame. <laughs> that, that would boar dreams, baby. Like... That would make Never big dreams. <laughs> Sorry, boy, you're gone. Yeah, if it's that limiting, I do think they could, should consider it, but it would just oh, feel God, odd. I, but I would totally I pay know. for that. Boar in the Hall of Fame. Holy <laughs> smokes, that'd be so awesome. Too uh, good. Yeah, yeah. But they said future nerfs to charge uh, due to it being the biggest challenge could be in, in store. So I would expect that. I would expect to see even less charge minions than we, we already see. Um, let's see, yeah. Can you imagine if they just remove charge completely, the whole mechanic? I mean, they can't. They just added one with the life yeah. steal. <laughs> I mean, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's like, I mean, that, that's going to be around for another year. Or so. <laughs> I do enjoy combo decks, though. I mean, so. Uh, but it's, it's not interactive. Point. That you know, like that's what yeah. everyone always is complaining about. But like Murloc yeah. Paladin back when old Merc guy was still a thing, like I loved that deck. If anything can happen. Well, the, but, see, the interactiveness yeah, is a story, the interactive thing is, it's one of those um, complaints I feel when um, 
the amount of cards that you need uh, is not very many. Meaning, like, right. you can get the combo before having to pick through your entire deck. Like, you know, we used to have yeah. the, the yeah. Warrior one, right? The Warrior, um, you know, Rampage and all that, that combo. Like, nobody complained about that because you had to go through, like, your entire freaking deck to get it. So yeah. it, it's a more of a combination of that. I'm actually totally for combo decks, too. It's just you can't pull it off, like, on turn 15. Like, you have to... It has to be like turn twenty five or twenty four on average that you have to you know you can pull it off. So you know that, that's I guess that was yeah that's kind of the, the biggest quest thing. road kind of same thing right? uh, you yeah. know like turn four and now yeah, yeah. dumb quest road yeah <laughs> quest road. Um, I'm glad nice. to see the back of that. <laughs> back in, you're gonna see that it's gonna be. I have a feeling it's gonna be back. And what do you think of that? Do you think Quest Rogue is completely dead for for good, or do you think people will adjust and still bring it to events somehow? I don't know. I I feel like it could still be like control decks. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It feels like just the slow decks aren't fast enough to kill you. So like maybe it could still be playable. Everyone's telling me like, oh, now that they're too slow, like the control decks have time to catch up, but like. I don't know if that's always true. Like, all you need to do is play Igneous Elemental and, like, a couple bounces, yeah, and there you go. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. I don't know. Is an average of, like, a turn or a turn and a half more than it is, right, like, before the nerf really going to mm -hmm. make that big a difference against control? It's... Yeah. I mean, you, know, it's... <clears throat> you can even make the deck slightly greedier, right? Like, if you mm -hmm. you could bring it in, like, a, a last hero standing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, tournament, because you just counter one specific control deck with it and just yeah. it can still just destroy control i think so yeah i think it i think yeah. there's a chance we see it seeing play again for sure jackie wants jackie still wants it to be played <laughs> I, 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 he's I, an now. I know right <laughs> i feel like there's a good chance it's going to be back in the future not maybe not the near future because the knee jerk is always not to play it but i i have yeah. this feeling it's going to be back and strong again um okay so here's the thing that i think one of the other big things that that's coming out or it's, that's we I'd like to discuss is really just how they're announcing just cards and stuff. So so last time with Ungoro, they had the the big reveal, you know, just the big announcement with the video, and then they almost immediately started to reveal cards, right? Like, you know, the typical one website or one streamer or one person, like whoever, would get like a card, and it would be released once a day, and you, you know how the subreddit reacts to all that and, and all that good stuff. So yeah. they decided to change it this time around. They're waiting, you know, a week and a half, two weeks, or actually maybe even more than two weeks, to start the reveal so that the reveal, you know, goes into the the launch uh, soon after. And uh, want to get your thoughts on it because you know the last week it's it's been quiet. You know, it's like. You kind of lose momentum from the original announcement, but um, do you think it's going to be worth it in the end? Uh, Alex? I think, yeah, I, I, I think that um, the expectation was the biggest issue because I can kind of mm -hmm. understand why they want to do it this way because they want to build hype closer because it just was too long of a time, I guess, with Angoro that people kind of lost interest because it was so immediate. Um, and so I think it's the expectation that it, it was the biggest issue is that because they did that for Ngoro, people were like, what the heck, you know, two weeks or, you know, more until we start actually seeing cards. So I actually don't think it's that bad. It's just what the community was expecting was the issue. Yeah, I'm not like, <laughs> I, I played Magic before Hearthstone and I'm not used to this because like, they'll give you like, first spoiler and then you just have like three weeks of spoilers, right? Right. So like, and then the site would come out. If it was something like that, I would I would love it because like you just get to take in new cards every day. Like oh wow, like look at all these cards, look at all these cards, yeah. and like oh now I can play with these cards. Yeah, like yeah. I yeah. wish it was something like that. Like this I kind feel of like Goro like, kind of was like that though. Yeah, sort of. exactly. And now this kind of like we're gonna show it and then wait two weeks and then we have to wait more for the you know the set to actually come out and it sucks a little bit, but you know new cards are always exciting, so I'm not really gonna complain about it honestly. <laughs> when is yeah. Com when is Comic Con again, guys? This weekend. Oh, it's, it's this Thursday, weekend. Okay. Friday, okay. Saturday, and Sunday. Okay, okay. So we still have no idea what the launch is, right? Like, if we they start revealing on the twenty fourth, when is the launch date? 
it's uh, i don't think uh, yeah, it's not know. out yet right it's yeah no yeah, we, don't, so. we don't know I, I think it's gonna be the first week of august or like first or second somewhere in there, i hope it's the second but, week uh, i'm on vacation like the first week so. oh, no. <laughs> it would suck. It would totally suck if it comes out so oh, selfish <laughs> My bad. Screw your all. You can wait a week while I'm on holiday. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you guys can reveal as many of your the cards you want, guys. You know. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I'm along the same lines too. I think the real alternative is just, um, you know, could they just reveal it a week or two before actually launching it instead too? Um, but I think they they do like this whole community type of reveal and i think all the community enjoys it too i don't I, I would hate for them to take that away from from community members yeah um yeah but yeah something i think three weeks would be perfect like you said and i think three weeks would be like optimal and then just kind of flow right into it because we've seen <laughs> all of it now like we've seen one week later after the the blizzcon of a what, grand tournament or whatever immediately start playing and we've seen too long so they're still trying to search for the best best one obviously It'd be really interesting yeah. to see their marketing stats like after you know doing it this way versus doing it the Angora way. Just, yeah, yeah. I'm sure the marketing team's got so much data. So I mean, much. one thing they usually do is usually on uh, one of the last days they do a big card dump and they do they show you about 30, 40 of the rest cards all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I do think it's a bad idea that they've waited <clears throat> for. A couple of weeks or whatever because I, I don't feel there's much like hype about it right now whereas when they revealed the first few cards there's, yeah. there's a lot of hype everyone's excited for the new yeah. expansion and that's kind of gone away whereas even if they just revealed like like done it very slowly and done like two or three cards a day that's just something to keep people hyped and there's something new to talk yeah. about every day <laughs> well uh, let's let's uh, let's see how people feel on the 24th though because like we don't have anything to go off right now you know so the hype's yeah, died yeah, but yeah. on the 24th yeah. maybe everyone will be like oh my god again you know again so well i mean they can i mean they can build it up too I, I think that this whole concept of just um you know having x amount of time and only releasing one or two cards you know a day during that time is not something that has to necessarily be there like they can they can build it up themselves you know like announce it on one day and then just figure out like you said there's 40 cards that they dump on us at the last day surely we mm -hmm. could do something you know in the meantime to kind of build that up and just have the big day be just the actual launch. Like it doesn't have to be, you know, like, oh, take in all 50 of these cards. To be honest, like 40 or 50 cards, we can't even review that many cards like on like yeah. our show. Yeah. That's like yeah. way too many yeah. to even review. So I, I, I wish they would use those cards and how they show them in a in a more creative way. They could they could totally do that. Yeah. I think it would have been really cool if they like they put the cards inside the ice cream citadel this weekend. That would be cool. Announcing it, like, Dude, that would be totally <laughs> viral. Then. Holy crap. Yeah, Can you seriously. imagine that? It, it could be like the <laughs> wrapper <laughs> around the cones and shit. Oh, man, dude. That would be totally <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would have been so wow. good. Yeah, like a little and you're hired. Yeah. Yeah. Like and you're totally hired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then like the, the community could, you know, post tweets. You yeah, it would be so, viral. Yeah, exactly. Be like, dude, cool. look at what I found, right? Look, I found this code. Like, and then you type the code in somewhere and it tells... I mean, they could have totally not ARG'd it, but you know, they could, they could totally <laughs> do, make a super fun campaign out of it. That would have been so cool. Um, ideas, ideas, ideas. Be sure to watch the yeah, show. I Blizzard. hope they're listening. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> okay, well, why don't we move on? The, definitely, again, uh, cool that Ben was doing some AMAs and uh, you know answering a lot of questions there as well as Mike to a degree too. Um, Let's see. The next thing I got here is oh, DreamHack Valencia happened um, this this past weekend too, or uh, this past week, and um, I didn't get a chance to catch too much of it. You know, I definitely know that um, you know. Congratulations to Harry Selden. Spoilers for winning, but um, I didn't catch too much outside of like Tyler's <laughs> matches here and there. Did you guys watch by chance? I didn't catch any, unfortunately. It seemed like everyone had a great time hanging out with each other. I was like, see, <laughs> yeah. see it lurk in Twitter, but I didn't uh, get to watch it, unfortunately. I'm yeah, glad I'd... to see Tyler like do well. Yeah. Because he, he has like the just the grinder tag on him right now. To, so to see him <laughs> have like some success, you know, yeah. it's pretty nice. Yeah. 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 I uh, didn't really watch much of it except like a bit right at the end, uh, the final, because uh, I was kind of sporting Ben. He's uh, from Britain, and I've met him a couple of times, and he was also playing Control Priest. So yes, he finished nice. second, but uh, but yeah, nice. he was good, man. Yeah, if you look at the hearth uh, the hearthpoint page for Valencia, they have a breakdown just of all 
all the classes and just you know uh, which classes did well and and um it, it definitely looks like event wise and and you can you know let me know and you know obviously jackie too from the standpoint of the pro scene and just events has the meta just completely stabilized or do you think there still is room for you know these control priests popping in here or these tempo priests popping in here from time to time um and, and still having success that way <clears throat> Uh, I'd say it's a little bit more viable for like the control-ish decks now since like the quest rogue nerf. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, I think people are just like sticking to the same thing. You know, we have a new set coming in. They're not like, they're not really experimenting as much. So I think they're just sticking to what they know. I, I could see the priest seeing a lot more play. Like maybe it's actually pretty good with quest rogue nerf. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I haven't seen very much experimentation uh, recently at least. Yeah. I think people are missing a trick with Elemental Rogue, though. Elemental Rogue is great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is, it is. I, and we're, we're going to be talking about Rogue in a second. I actually <laughs> mixed Elemental Rogue with that. We were supposed to do a Jade Rogue, and I ended up, of course, mixing Elementals into it. So. I always mix those two, too. Yeah. It's good. It's yeah. definitely fun. It, yeah. It's crazy to me to see on this, like, the DreamHack, like, archetype breakdown. It's 11 of 16 broad Evolve Shaman. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's like a deck that started out as like a meme. Right. <laughs> we were totally talking playing. about this deck on Value Town. I don't know how many times. <laughs> Noxious. It was in December. I told Noxious, like, <laughs> dude, I'm like, Noxious, I think this Evolve Shaman, like, will be it's legit. Good. Like, it will be legit. <laughs> and then, and we were like, yeah, I think so. I think so. And no, you know, everybody thought we were just like freaking joking and stuff. And it's like, look now, it's like one of the best decks. It's like crazy. You know? <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think that evolved some. I've been seeing it a little bit less recently, though. Have you guys been seeing mm -hmm. it drop a little bit in the meta, like uh, recently, or do you still see a ton of shaman every day? I still, I still see, it a ton, see but... yeah, yeah, I still okay. see a fair bit. Okay, yeah, cool. It's all over ladder, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, never <laughs> mind then. <laughs> Maybe I'm just lucky. <laughs> I was like, I totally tech my decks to beat shaman, and I don't even play any shaman. It's like crazy. Um, it's the law of hearts. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, why don't we uh, move on to uh, talk about our week in Hearthstone, and I uh, figured we would talk about the Ramp Druid, given that there's been a lot of Ramp Druid being played, and I've, I've actually been playing a lot, and I think all three of us have. So, um, you know, one of the Ramp Druids that's, I, I think, been getting a lot of uh, following has been the, the Big Druid. <laughs> so it's a real, <laughs> real creative easy. name. The easy, big, big druid. Easy, druid. Yeah. <laughs> easy, easy, big druid. I love that. Uh, you it, know, it, the guy. It's so great. It's crazy <laughs> to me that like everyone would, everyone would spam like ramp druid resident sleeper, like something that nobody wanted to watch. But you call it big druid. Now everybody <laughs> wants to see every streamer <laughs> play big druid all the time. It's like <laughs> druid B I G, <laughs> dude. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> It's group mentality. Biggie, but... Biggie Druid. Yeah, exactly. So um, I figured we'd, we'd just show all three of them. So the left one is Allie, the one Allie's been playing. Uh, very close yeah. to the one dog's been playing, I think. And then, yeah, it's Doc's list. Yeah, and the one in the middle is Jackie, and the one I'm playing is on the right. And mine's Biggish Druid. It's not, not quite full out big, big, big Druid because I have a, a little bit of elements and experimenting in it. So, um, yeah, why don't we start with the dog one, given that this one seems to be. Um, the one that's been having a lot of success lately. And Ali, you told me that Dog was on record saying that he thinks it's the best yeah. deck in Hearthstone. I need to get the audio clip to prove that, <laughs> uh, but he, I, he either said one of the best or the best. And, wow. and I do, I agree with him. I think it's really strong. Yeah, that's, um, wow, that's crazy. I crafted Tyrantis. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Never thought you know, I'd hear those I, words. I, I, Dog <laughs> memeing us, dude. He's totally memeing us. He was picking Tyrantis on Streamer Showdown, like for every single Twitch chat, Jackie, remember? Or was it Ultra Sword? I was, yeah, I can't remember. But anyways. I get, I get so excited to get Tyrantis off Elise, and then I was like, oh, Dog's running Tyrantis. Like, this is an excuse um, to, to craft him. <laughs> and so I did. I did. I crafted Tyrantis, and um, no, I think the the deck is is really really good. I mean, it can spiral out of control so easily if you just yeah. you know draw your ram. But uh, yeah, no, I I think it's very strong. Bright eyed scout triggers me a little bit. <laughs> it's good to just ask you that. <laughs> totally good. Can't ask tell you, that. you how many times I have a five mana wrath or a five mana wild growth in my hand. But <laughs> other than that, 
That's why I only run one. <laughs> Every time I watch an Ali stream, when when she plays Bright Eyed Scout, I I know it's fifty percent. It's gonna be silent for the next ten seconds, <laughs> or, just, or it's gonna be yes. Oh my god, that was awesome. There's no in between. Yeah. The salt just oh unless god. I get nourished, and I'm just kind of like, oh well. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. No, I, I actually dropped that card from my deck because it was triggering me too. I was just like, this ain't worth it, man. You're the this five mana innervates? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those are great. It's so insane, though. Like, it can just win you the game. Oh, yeah. It definitely. can. It can. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, that's for sure. Um, but let's see. What's some of the other cards in here? Um, let's see. What do you guys think of? So, what do you guys think of Anaconda? Because. You know, a lot of a lot of times when we're talking about Ram Truid, Anaconda's like an auto. Yeah, of course we're gonna mm -hmm. put it in, right? Because we want to we want to get out those those big ten drops. But um, how good do you think it is right now? I think it's great. Yeah, especially in a deck like this, I would think it's it's really good. Enough to run two. Like I I personally just enjoy one. Yeah, me too. Um, me too. I have a lot of. I feel like a lot of the time I have like a primordial, a Ysera you know a cairn yeah. in my hand and yeah. it's just not doing much for me i still think it's great and i still think you need to have it in there uh but for me i just like a, a one a one of mm -hmm. yeah it looks like jackie you have two of them in there right yeah i mean mm -hmm. my version's a bit more it's higher statted yeah, I've got yeah. so I've got like Bog Creeper and stuff, like more like good pulls okay. instead of like Ancient yeah. Immortal, like Bog Creeper, like Sogath yeah. is insane. Yeah, this looks oh, like a, this looks like Frozen's list, like a while, a while back, right? Um, yeah, yeah, the, it's kind of similar. Yeah, yeah with the Bog Creepers and stuff, it was good. But yeah, uh, was I'm not running good. Swipe because Swipe is a terrible card right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I would not be running Swipe unless I, I'm I, unless I had Wild. Well, I have Wild Pyro. That's the only reason I'm running it. If I didn't have Wild Pyro in the deck, I wouldn't be running it either. So I was it, playing with Starfall. I tried Starfall too. Yeah. It just it just wasn't quite good enough because um the nice thing about swipe is that you get that one big damage on that, you know, thing from below or whatever it is, right? That auctioneer. The, yeah, auctioneer or, or a three six <laughs> behemoth, whatever it is, right? It's so, it's nice to just get yeah. that extra damage on it. Yeah. What do you think about Ken? Because I I feel like it doesn't really I make, like, I feel like yeah. the only reason yeah. you're playing Ken in the deck is for bonds. And yeah, I don't yeah. feel like it's worth playing it in the deck just for Barnes, but a lot of people seem to be running it. Yeah, I, I'm underwhelmed by it, honestly. Okay. Like, looking at your list here, and, like, and that's also, you know, the Anaconda problem for me. You know, I, the, the Sarah and the Curator and Cairn, like a lot of um, lower status attack minions. But I think the Cairn's been generally underwhelming. At least, at least right. the main. Yeah. What do you think, Ann? Yeah, I, I like seeing uh, like bog creepers a lot more than mm -hmm. Karen. I think. It's, I mean, it makes the anacondas better, but it's just like a big thing, you know. It stops the aggro decks as well. Uh, yeah. It's usually like a good pull off of uh, Yasaraj or anaconda. You know, I think it's just a really good minion. That's one of the yeah. big things I say. Like in in the between these two decks. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I haven't really trust, tested Sogoth, but it it actually kind of makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. I mean, I think I'll I think that. that's that's why the the deck actually does pretty well against aggro, right? Just just because of the Bach Reapers and Sogoth, it's just mm -hmm. it's just it's surprisingly how good it is, given that most of the time with ramp that people think that playing super fast decks beats it, uh, <laughs> but it actually stuffs it pretty well. It has a lot of healing too, right? Um, but to your point with Karen, Allie, is that I, I thought it was bad too. And I didn't want to add Bach Reaper because I've definitely played it, you know, that just that route before. So just mm -hmm. searching for cards that are good with Barnes and good, yeah. you know, just with <laughs> whatever, with Yasharaj and whatever. That's why I ended up experimenting with the Hoggers because I was telling Allie and Jackie, I just have this sweet, this soft Hogger. spot for Hogger. And so I always revisit it. And this just happens that this week was the week that I revisited it. And surprisingly, it's actually performed okay i mean it's not like the greatest thing in the world but like against shaman i'm actually t able to keep up with minions on the board because of cards like hogger and barnes and yasharaj and, and things like that so it, it's it's kind of interesting i mean again like i wouldn't say it's better than like ball creeper but it's it's got its own elements that surprisingly hogger just doesn't die instantly like it used to like every time it, i used to play it just die like immediately now like you can actually play it behind something or if you get yasharaj and he gets hogger that's great right I mean, it's like crazy good. good yeah 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 
I'm surprised yeah. we've made it this far. Yeah. And we haven't talked about this vicious fledgling in your deck. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. You know, my, my deck's obviously a little bit Frankensteinish, but the thing is, yeah. the thing about vicious fledgling is that, you know, I was still trying to find some more things to, to put in the, the ramp deck without going. Because I feel like if you go too far into the ramp, the big big druid part, it it doesn't necessarily have like even more explosiveness to it. So I just wanted to make sure I had those explosive cards, like the 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 death lords and things like that. And mm -hmm. so it's like, okay, that's the end game. If I get the death lord or the dragon, um, the deathwing dragon lord, you know, I get all the dragons on the board. I beat you know whatever deck, right? But there's not many other cards like that at the end of the game in the hearts, you know, just at mm -hmm. least available to us. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just gonna add fledgling because it's an auto win, like one out of four you know um games for me if i can innervate it out on turn one so it's just kind of like yeah. that's nice <laughs> do, it's like, do i know yes. a thing or two about innervating fledgling <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly right that's brutal that's so brutal dude that was so brutal what are you saying have you ever, yeah? i was gonna say have you ever um gotten fledgling from a barns and it survived and it, you've, you've like grown it to Ooh. I, you know I, I had mean? one like, adapt. That I had one adapt with it, but it was I ended up putting like health on it or so. Or, uh, or I mean, it, it didn't. I didn't actually get to hit again with it or anything. But it happened one time because I had, um, I think I had a primordial Drake in front of it, mm -hmm. so it, okay. it, it was able to live like one turn. But and, and he didn't prioritize it either, so it's just kind of like right. a one-one. It's not as big a deal. How have you found um, Hogger Doom of Elwyn? Because I love that card, but I've never I haven't it's, played it in so long. It's not as good as uh, the original Hogger in this deck, uh, surprisingly, right. just because you get something immediately from it. But it has a ton of synergy against Primordial Drakes and um, even just like the Wild Pyro. Sometimes you can you know you just just kind of again flood your board a little bit, just kind of build wide a bit, and um, so it, it's nice in that way. You know, it, again, it's designed not to be immediate impact, which is generally a bad thing in Hearthstone. But um, with the current meta, it's actually not terrible. And sometimes it can draw, like, power, uh, Shadow Word Deaths and things like that. And it's, like, great. It's, like, if you want to use Shadow Word Death on this, <laughs> then I'm happy <laughs> to donate a 6-6 six, six to you, man. It's totally cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, I think that's cool. The Faceless, I think, is great, too. I think Faceless is something that people aren't looking at enough in, in these type of decks too, especially with the ones with Anaconda, because you can just, you know, if, if they don't kill your Anaconda because they're avoiding it, you kill it, and then you just faceless it immediately after that, whatever you get out of it. So it's, Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Just thinking we should put faceless manipulator in underrated or debated. Yeah, <laughs> we, could. we could have done that. We didn't have it this week though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not, not this week. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but anyways, Definitely give it uh, Ram Druid a tryout, guys, and it's definitely a lot of fun. I've been playing against a lot of Ram Druids too, and it's just, it's kind of oh, yeah. silly, <laughs> just the way <laughs> it plays out. Uh, but um, have you guys had any inclination to play Naturalize? Like, have you guys had any, <clears throat> any wants or desires to play no. one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I tried it out a bit because yeah. Naturalize is. Because you're obviously falling behind with this deck, like mm -hmm. you yep. really need some like tempo plays. Naturalize is like insane of tempo. So I was trying yeah. a list with like oracles because you Ooh. have the anaconda, which is a beast. So yeah. you can, like curate a oracle. Um, oh, that's nice. But it wasn't very good. So. I mean, you can draw. <laughs> yeah. there, there's not much space, right? Like, there's not much yeah. places that you can even add stuff because it needs everything. But um, it's a lot of fun. And your charge, guys. Your charge is one of my favorite cards in Hearthstone now, I think. It, it's because I, I love greedy cards. And, you know, one of the things I've always complained <laughs> about with Hearthstone is that I just don't think there's, like, enough 10-drop greedy cards that, you know, if I just want to play a stupid, greedy, crazy, crazy <laughs> deck, like, I, you know, I can't put, like, these are the cards right here, right? And that's all we got, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, there's... There's not well, the uh, game. These are the big cards. Yeah, the but... game favors <laughs> aggro so much of the time. It so, is, but they could know, make one. A... They could just make a <laughs> stupid, you know, like like um, almost like art, uh, what's my art, arc mage or whatever, right? Um, or, oh, like, Rafam? Rafam, Rafam, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Rafam. Just like make make some. I mean, even Rafam was like a little bit, um, you know, not not even crazy greedy, given that the value of it wasn't even just matched up. I think right, but. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to have a few more of them. And, and Yasharj, I feel like, is one of the best ones. 
Uh, and yeah. yeah, it's really, really fun to play it. Okay, uh, let's see. Um, let's see, let's, uh, I think that was... Or any other decks you guys were, were playing this week? I mean, we might not have it right, right here to show, but anything interesting that you guys noticed? I've been playing mm-hmm. around with Dragon Priest a little bit. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. I, I still don't know how I feel about it. Like, I enjoy the deck, and I like versions with, like, Divine Spirit and Inner Fire, mm-hmm. but I also sometimes feel like I just draw my Divine Spirits and Inner Fires, and I just have nothing to do. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been playing around with that a little bit. Cool. Hmm. I think I was playing like some Nazoth Shaman, but that didn't turn out turn out very good. <laughs> uh, with the uh, ancestral spirit and white eyes, and yeah. all that good stuff. So, yeah, that's uh, always fun. Uh, man. It's totally thing. fun. Okay, well, I was playing some. Uh, yep. I was playing some Kazakas Priest, and I really do feel like there's potential there. Mm-hmm. But it's I haven't yeah. good. Quite got a list yet. I'm happy with. Yeah. Somebody, yeah. one of our patrons, was telling me that too. That they that they've been playing it a lot, and they think it's like pretty good right now in the meta. So yeah. I was going to get around I it. Think... Al- Allie sounds like she's been playing it. Yeah. I, I, well, the fact that it has like greater healing potion, like for me with Kazakis Mage was the big, the biggest thing was um, health, you know, and like if you didn't get armor from your Kazakis or something, but yeah. Priest yeah. of the Feast and he- he- greater healing potion, I feel like Priest just has more tools to kind of make up for the fact that you're running one of and um, you know what I mean? Without yeah. Reno, obviously. So yeah, no, yeah. I know I think, Kazakus Priest is great. I've just been running Kibler's List because I think he hit Legend with it last season, maybe, or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, he finished like top 200. Yeah. 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 Like, he's in pretty yeah. damn well with it. So. He's played it yeah. so much, though. I mean, he, he knows <laughs> how the matchups go really, really well <laughs> at this point. Yeah. yeah. I don't know it that well. <laughs> no, one bad thing about Kazakus Priest, though, like, compared to like, like the other Kazakus classes, is that Priest really doesn't have good or well, much AoE. Like you have dragon fire potion, which is insane, but then that's it. Other than that, you've got like yeah. holy nova, which isn't really that good. Holy you can play so like <laughs> obviously you can play like primordial drake, but yeah. it's not as good compared to like mage, where you have like blizzard, yeah. flame strike, volcanic potion, meteor, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That's a good point. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you kind of have to like hope that shadow visions hits dragon fire potion, I guess. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah, sometimes you just get rolled by like aggro druid because you just. Like Holy Nova well, doesn't do enough. But it, yeah. You have Kazakus too. Kazakus was one too. You get your AOE. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you get it. That's true. <laughs> when I was playing Dragon, when I was playing uh, a Kazakus Mage, you know, because of Deck of the Week, I would never get that AOE. It was so, so <laughs> crazy. <laughs> oh right. man, it's brutal. Uh, I'm lucky. But uh, why don't we uh, give a quick shout out to some of the folks that have been uh, that listen to the show? For those of you that don't know, Value Town is available on iTunes audio as well as Google Play and SoundCloud. And we usually like to take a little bit of time to give a shout out to some of the folks that um, have left us, you know, some nice reviews. It helps out a lot with SEO in terms of people trying to find Value Town when they're searching for Hearthstone podcasts. So a big shout out to Thirsty Hippo, October one two three four five, the Real Flamingo, and Jow Brewer twenty eight. Thanks for doing that. And again, you can help us out by just spending like a minute and, and going into iTunes and doing that if you guys uh, do listen to the show on your iPhone on the way to work or whatever it is. Uh, of course, the show is 100% uh, sponsored or, or supported by our Patreon that we have, patreon.com slash valuetown. So we always take a little bit of time just to give a shout out to just some of our patrons each and every week. If we haven't read out your name, guys, don't worry. We will get to you. I def- I'm just like going down the list each week. You know, I don't want to read out like 50 100 people so i just try to get to a little bit each week so um you know if you're wondering why your name hasn't been called that's probably the reason but big shout out we love you all yeah we love you all (laughs) we definitely love you all (laughs) Uh, big big shout out to mike t our legendary producer as always and then uh ray dan bryce l ed h vincent g uh zihong c stuart p s or g eric l matthew h w s and drunken monk uh, thanks so much for supporting. And again, guys, check out the the um, the Patreon because um, you know without you guys, without support for the show, we're not able to do the show. So a dollar, whatever you want to you know throw in there, it, it helps in a big way. If everybody listened to the show, just you know give us a quarter or you know a dollar or whatever, we'd be in, in great shape, <laughs> obviously. So we can't uh, do it without you. Yeah, exactly. If you have it, obviously. <laughs> if you have it. 
Um, and, and also, you get to participate in the deck of the week that we do each uh, Monday, the shows. You actually get guests on the show. Everybody can listen to it and, and have access to it. But you guys get to be our, our guests. Like, we had two or three of them this week with Neali and Jackie. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, okay, well, let's move on to our new segment, Deck Evolution.